Have you ever wondered how it all began? Picture an abyss, an infinite void of nothingness. Then around 13.8 billion years ago, in less than a blink of an eye, it all changed. This mighty event, the Big Bang, birthed our universe. Before the Big Bang, there was no space, no time, no matter, only an infinitesimal point of singularity. This point, infinitely hot and dense, was all that existed. Then, in a moment of cosmic inception, it exploded. This wasn't an explosion like we're used to, flinging debris into space. No, this was the very fabric of space itself expanding. In the immediate aftermath of this cosmic detonation, the universe was a hot, dense sea of particles and energy. As it expanded, it cooled. Over hundreds of thousands of years, the particles began to coalesce. The first atoms formed, mainly hydrogen and helium, the simplest and lightest elements. This was the universe's cooling off period, a dark age where the universe was an almost uniform soup of atoms. But tiny variations in density, likely from quantum fluctuations in the early universe, meant that over time, gravity could start to do its work. Slowly but surely, these atoms were pulled together by gravity, forming vast clouds of gas. Over millions of years, these clouds collapsed under their own weight, igniting the birth of the first stars. These stars grouped together to form galaxies, and within these galaxies, new stars were born. And around these stars, planets began to form. The universe was no longer a uniform soup. It was a rich tapestry of galaxies, stars and planets. From the chaos and heat of the Big Bang, the beauty and structure of the cosmos had emerged. This was the universe's first act, the opening scene in the play of existence. And so the stage was set for life as we know it. From the vast expanse of the universe, a unique system was taking shape. At the heart of this grand cosmic theater, the solar system was beginning to form from a colossal cloud of gas and dust, a remnant of a long dead star. This cloud, known as a nebula, began to collapse under its own gravity, creating a spinning disk of matter at its center. As the disk spun faster and faster, most of the matter was pulled into the center, giving birth to our sun. The remaining matter, a mere 1%, began to stick together, forming the planets, asteroids and comets that make up our solar system. Among these celestial bodies, the third rock from the sun, our beloved Earth, began to take shape. It was a violent and chaotic time, with frequent collisions shaping and reshaping the young planet. Eventually, after a period of intense bombardment, the Earth cooled and a thin crust formed on its surface. But what set Earth apart from its planetary siblings? What made it suitable for life? The answer lies in a unique combination of factors. Firstly, Earth's distance from the Sun places it in the Goldilocks zone, not too hot, not too cold, but just right for liquid water to exist. Secondly, its size and mass allow it to have a strong gravitational field, which holds onto a life-sustaining atmosphere. And finally, its molten core creates a magnetic field that protects the planet from harmful solar radiation. Moreover, Earth's dynamic nature, driven by plate tectonics and the water cycle, continually reshapes the planet, creating diverse environments that can support a wide variety of life forms. This is in stark contrast to the static, harsh conditions found on other planets. From a cloud of cosmic dust to a vibrant, life-sustaining planet, the evolution of Earth is a testament to the power of cosmic forces. Earth, a unique blue marble in the vast cosmos, was ready for the emergence of life. On the young Earth, a special concoction was brewing. This was not your typical soup, however. It was a soup of life, a mixture of organic molecules that, under the right conditions, gave birth to the first life forms. This is a concept known as the primordial soup theory. Now, what made this soup so special? Well, it was a potent blend of water, methane, ammonia and hydrogen. The early Earth was a hot, volatile place, and these ingredients were abundant. This mixture, under the intense heat and pressure of the early Earth, began to react with each other, forming more complex molecules. Imagine a vast ocean, a soup kitchen of sorts, simmering and bubbling under the heat of the young sun. No chef was stirring this pot, but there was a catalyst at work. Lightning, a common occurrence in the Earth's early atmosphere, provided the energy needed for these molecules to react and form amino acids, the building blocks of life. It's like a grand cosmic recipe, isn't it? Take a dash of methane, a sprinkle of ammonia, a pinch of hydrogen, mix it all in a vast ocean and heat it up with a bolt of lightning. 
This might sound oversimplified, but that's essentially what scientists believe happened. However, it's not just about the ingredients. The conditions on the early Earth played an integral role too. It was a harsh, unforgiving world, but it was also a world of opportunity. The high temperatures, the constant bombardment of cosmic rays, the absence of oxygen, all these factors created an environment where these simple molecules could form into complex ones, eventually leading to the emergence of the first life forms. So the next time you prepare a bowl of soup, remember, you're not just making a meal, you're recreating a cosmic event, a fundamental process that billions of years ago set the stage for life as we know it. This was the beginning of something extraordinary. In this early Earth, life was about to make its first appearance. Picture a world stirred by volcanic activity, bombarded by cosmic radiation and awash with a potent cocktail of chemicals. Here, in this primordial soup, the first stirrings of life began. But how did it happen? How did non-living matter give rise to living organisms? This question has puzzled scientists for centuries. One compelling theory is known as abiogenesis, the process by which life arises naturally from non-living matter. Picture simple molecules in this primordial soup, driven by the energy of sunlight or volcanic heat, gradually forming more complex compounds. Over time, these complex compounds could have developed into self-replicating molecules, the precursors to DNA. But the leap from self-replicating molecules to the first simple life forms is a monumental one. Some scientists propose that these molecules may have been enclosed within tiny bubbles of fat or protein, creating the first primitive cells. These bubbles provided a stable environment where the molecules could interact and evolve. Over countless generations, these simple cells may have become more complex. They may have developed the ability to harness energy from their environment, to reproduce more efficiently, and to protect themselves from harm. These are the basic functions of life as we know it. And so, from the harsh and tumultuous conditions of early Earth, life emerged. It was nothing like the myriad forms of life we see today. It was simple, crude even, but it had the ability to replicate, to evolve, and to adapt to its surroundings. The evolution from these simple life forms to the complex organisms we see today is a story of incredible resilience and adaptability. It's a story of life's tenacious grip, of its relentless drive to survive and thrive in the face of adversity. Life, as simple as it was, had finally made its debut. From these humble beginnings, life was about to embark on a grand journey. As the eons rolled on, our primordial ancestors began to evolve, marking the dawn of a new era. This evolution was not a straight path, but a sprawling tree of life branching out in all directions. The first major milestone was the leap from single-celled organisms to multicellular ones. Imagine, if you will, a world where individual cells, each with their own life, came together to form complex entities. This was not a mere congregation, but a symphony of cells working in harmony, each performing a unique role for the greater good. As life became increasingly complex, it began to explore new realms. The next significant leap was the move from water to land. This was no small feat. It required a whole suite of adaptations, from the development of lungs to withstand the dry air, to the evolution of limbs to navigate the uneven terrain. Yet life, in its relentless pursuit of survival, rose to the challenge, giving birth to a whole new world of terrestrial organisms. In due course, a new kind of creature emerged. Mammals, warm-blooded with hair or fur and a unique way of raising their young. Mammals brought with them a new level of complexity and adaptability, among these mammals, one lineage would take a path that led to us, humans. We, who have the power to ponder our own existence, to question our origins, and to shape our destiny. The evolution of life is a tale of extraordinary transformation, of simple cells evolving into complex organisms, of life braving the harsh land from the safety of the seas, of mammals rising, and of humans emerging. It's a story of countless trials and errors, of survival and extinction, of adaptation and innovation. The journey of life, from a single cell to the diversity we see today, is nothing short of miraculous. Life has come a long way, but where is it headed? As we stand on the precipice of the future, the evolution of life continues to be an unfolding story, one that's as fascinating as it is unpredictable. The potential trajectories are vast and varied, but let's delve into a few possibilities. 
Firstly, let's consider human evolution. Over the past several million years, we've seen our ancestors evolve from apes to Homo sapiens, developing complex brains and sophisticated tools. But what might the next steps look like? Some scientists speculate that we're heading towards a future where our bodies will adapt to the digital age. We might see an increase in our brain size or a decrease in our physical strength. Others suggest that genetic engineering could play a significant role, allowing us to choose our own evolutionary path. Then there's the tantalizing question of life on other planets. As we continue to explore the cosmos, we are constantly on the lookout for signs of life beyond Earth. Could there be organisms that have adapted to the harsh conditions of Mars or the icy moons of Jupiter? The discovery of life elsewhere would not only redefine our understanding of life's capabilities, but also underscore our place in the grand cosmic theatre. However, the future of life on Earth is not just about evolution and space exploration. It's also about the impact of our own actions. Climate change, deforestation and pollution pose significant threats to biodiversity. The decisions we make today will determine the kind of world future generations inherit. Will we rise to the challenge and ensure a sustainable future, or will we witness the decline of life as we know it? In the grand scheme of things, we're just a fleeting moment in life's long history. Yet our actions have far-reaching consequences. We hold the power to shape not just our future, but the future of all life on Earth. Only time will tell what the future holds for life in this vast universe. So, how did life begin? This question has intrigued humanity for centuries, sparking curiosity and wonder. As we've journeyed through the cosmos, from the Big Bang to the formation of our solar system and Earth, we've glimpsed the majestic tapestry of the universe. Our home, Earth, cradled in the vast cosmic ocean, was once a fiery, molten mass. Over billions of years, it cooled to form a planet offering the perfect conditions for life to take root. The primordial soup, a cocktail of organic compounds, became the stage where life's first act unfolded. From these humble beginnings, life sprang forth, beginning its complex dance. The birth of life is a miraculous event, a testament to the resilience and adaptability of nature. The evolution of life is a story of constant change, of species adapting and evolving, of survival and extinction. Life has thrived in the most inhospitable environments, from the scorching deserts to the freezing poles, from the highest mountains to the deepest oceans. It's a testament to life's tenacity, its will to survive and thrive. And what of the future of life? It's a question that stirs our imagination. Will we find life in the distant corners of the universe? Will we become interstellar travelers, carrying the seeds of life to new worlds? These are questions that inspire us, pushing us to explore and discover. Life's origin remains shrouded in mystery, a puzzle we're still piecing together. But it's this very mystery that fuels our curiosity, our desire to understand. It invites us to ask questions, to explore, to wonder. So let's continue this journey of exploration and discovery, of questioning and understanding. Let's marvel at the beauty and complexity of life at the miracle that is our existence. For the origin of life remains one of the greatest mysteries of our time, a testament to the incredible complexity and beauty of our universe.